In this video, I'm going to give you the top three things that I like to consider when determining what rotation we're going to start in at the beginning of a game. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to give you the quick and easy method that I like to use when determining how to get the matchups that we want. So hang around and we'll see you in the video. The first thing I'm going to do is look to see who on the other team is going to be the biggest threat to score, uh, whether they're in system or out of system or in transition. Uh, what are they going to do? Who are they going to set? And who's going to score a lot of points for them by way of attack? Once we've identified that, then it's a matter of figuring out from a defensive standpoint, what can we do to slow her down or hold her to fewer points than she would normally score? The next thing we're going to have to look at is whether or not the matchup we're looking at or the matchup that we want is going to force us to start in a string of rotations that we're not performing very well in. So we had plenty of data from the morning that would tell us which rotations we were performing well in and which rotations we were losing a lot of points in. Um, and leading up to this moment, or as, as this match was starting, uh, we were actually losing a lot of points in our two-hitter rotations when the setter was front row. Now, the third thing that we like to consider is who on our side of the net has been performing well offensively? Who's been scoring a lot of kills? Who's hitting at a great percentage or a high hitter efficiency? And uh, if, if we set this player a lot, can she, will she get the job done for us and uh and help us put this thing away now for the quick and easy method that i like to use to determine how to get the matchups that we want we're going to take a look at the shot chart that i use when scouting opponents in this example you can see that i have each of the six rotations all written out uh rotations one through six and on my sheet i like to run them counterclockwise next to each of their rotations i'll then write the number of the rotation that we want to be in when we're serving. So in this example, against their rotation one, we want to be serving in two. Against their rotation two, we want to be serving in three. And from there, it's just going to run uh, in rotational order. So four, rotation five, rotation six, and rotation one, and then we're back to two again. Now, in order for this to work and to get the matchups that you want, there, there needs to be some guesswork that's involved. You're going to have to take a guess on what rotation your opponent's going to start in. When you're scouting your opponent, you have to be sure that you circle or identify in some way what rotations your opponent starts in. So on my sheet, what I do is I circle the rotation that they start in, and then I indicate whether they were receiving or serving. You can see here that I've written the letters REC or receive and SRV for serve. Now I might lose some of you here, but I'm going to do the best I can to keep the explanation as simple as possible. If we look at this example here on the shot chart, if our opponent is going to start serving in rotation 5, the sheet tells us that we need to be serving in our rotation 6 when they're siding out in rotation 5. So how do we get that? They're going to start serving in row 5, we want to be in R6 when we're serving against that rotation. So that tells us that we need to receive in our rotation 5 in order to side out and then rotate to rotation 6. And now we'll be serving in the matchup and the rotation that we want against their rotation 5. In the next game, if they're going to start in rotation 4 on receive, we actually don't have to make any changes to where we're starting because we had already started in row 5. So we write that down on the lineup card again. Uh, and as we can see here, our, our sheet is telling us start in rotation 5 when serving against their 4. And there you have it. My quick and easy method to determining what rotation to start in to get the matchups that you want. Again, it requires you to do a little bit of scouting, a little bit of guesswork, and then uh, also to write out the rotations that your team needs to be serving in against their side out rotations. And now you have a, a cheat sheet to use when you're in between games. All you have to do is identify the rotation that they're going to start in, whether or not they're on serve or receive, 
and follow the guideline that you've set for yourself as indicated by which rotations you want to be serving in uh, when they're in a particular side out rotation. Now, for those of you that have stuck around this long and are still watching the video, I've got some bonus material for you, which I'll cover now. In this particular match, things were unfolding uh, a little bit differently than as planned. We had gone for a particular blocking matchup that we thought would give us an advantage uh, to, to slowing down their offense, and it wasn't happening. Our opponent had made an adjustment and had moved some positions around and also started in a different rotation than they had been all day. So what did we do to make the adjustments? The way this game had played out, uh, they were running a lot of offense from their right side, but they were scoring most effectively from their left. And as it turned out, neither one of our right front blockers were any good at slowing down their best hitter. But what was happening was when the ball was getting past our block uh, and, and going down the line, we weren't digging those balls. We weren't defending them. We weren't uh, slowing any of them down. So what we had decided to do was actually match up our, our weaker blocker against their better hitter, uh, which I know sounds kind of crazy, but what it did for us is it said, okay, if the hitter's going to score anyways, regardless of who's blocking, then what does it matter uh, in terms of who we put in front of her uh, to block? The difference was when the ball was hit down the line, we actually have a really good line defender um, in number seven, but we weren't getting to use her because she was blocking uh, against in the front row against their better hitter. So going into the third game, we had looked at two things. We had looked at how's our team performing now, and um, are there any rotations that are, are going really poorly for us that we would want to start away from? Uh, and, and there were. Rotations one and two were really bad uh, against, uh, against this opponent, uh, which, was, which was kind of strange because in the previous three matches, Rotations 1, 2, and 3 were very good for us. Um, so that was kind of a curveball and something that we had to, to really consider. But the other thing, too, was uh, in looking for a solution to slowing down their best outside hitter, um, it, it really made more sense to put our weaker blocker in front against her and to have our better line defender back row um, to, again... Not stop her, but dig one or two extra balls, um, either per rally or per game, to, uh, to give us a fighting chance to, to maybe score in transition. Okay, and for those of you that haven't had enough and you'd like to see more of how this match was played out, you can click the link above and it'll take you to my live broadcast where you can watch the remainder of this match. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to hit the like button as it really helps the channel grow. And if you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when my next video goes live.